this video we're going to take a look at the migration workflow under the hood. So if you've previously looked at the feature walkthrough, you've seen it through the UI. So in this section, we're going to talk a little bit more about what actually happens under the hood. So the migration workflow begins with a pre-check phase. Then we move on to the deployment of the new vCenter server appliance. This is followed by an export phase. Once the export is completed, that data is transferred to the new vCenter server appliance. The first boot process is then initiated and finally the data is imported. So the pre-check performs some pre-checks and validations. Deploy is where we deploy a new vCSA. We export the data from the source, transfer the export data to the new vCSA. The first boot scripts are executed and then finally we import the data. So let's talk about the pre-check phase first. So what this does is it verifies that all the services are running on the source Windows vCenter server, make sure that all the services are in healthy or green state. It estimates the export disk usage, so it makes sure that the Windows uh, machine has enough free space to satisfy the export. It verifies that the certificates are valid, not expired and have the correct FQDN. We also discover any registered extensions, so SRM, Update Manager, NSX, for example, <clears throat> and we'll display some information based on those. We'll take a look at an example of that using the Update Manager in a later module. We collect the network information, so the IP address, FQDN, subnet, gateway, DNS, etc. And then the migration assistant begins listening on port 9123. Once the pre-checks have passed, a new vCenter server appliance is deployed to your target ESXi host and it's configured with a temporary IP address. We need it to have a temporary IP address so that both the source Windows vCenter and the new vCenter server appliance can exist on the network at the same time. The new appliance must have connectivity to the source Windows vCenter and it must be able to forward and reverse DNS lookup the IP address and FQDN of the source Windows vCenter. Once the vCenter server appliance has been deployed, the export phase will begin. So all the individual components are exported sequentially. Failure to export any component will cause the migration process to fail and you would have had to troubleshoot why the export failed and begin the migration again. The export is staged to the AppData local VMware vCenter migration assistant export director. And we look at the export in more detail in the deep dive module. Once the export is complete, we need to transfer that information to the new vCenter server appliance. So it's zipped up, including the logs from the migration assistant, and everything is transferred to the new vCenter server appliance using the SCP protocol on port 22. So we need to make sure that that port is open between the source Windows vCenter and the vCenter server appliance. Next, the first boot process is initiated on the vCenter server appliance. This is the same first boot process that would happen on a clean install of a vCenter server appliance. So the first boot scripts are run sequentially, configure all the services to a factory default setting. If any one of the first boot processes fail, then you would need to restart the migration process again. And lastly, once the first boot process is complete, we can import the data. So the import data is unpacked. Each component imports its own data sequentially. Again, if any import failure occurs, we would have to restart the migration process again. But once the import is completed, the import data then is cleaned up and the vCenter server appliance is ready for use. So that highlights the migration workflow in a little bit more detail. We will even delve a little bit deeper in the next module to each of those phases and highlight every little aspect that's happening under the hood via the log messages. The next section we're going to talk about is the supported migration paths. So I hope you enjoyed this video.